I close my eyes and colors fly There's no hiding from your grace I can't deny your heart for mine In its unrelenting chase I was on the edge of deception Caught up in my own hesitation Until your love took over me So I let go and I let love Show me life like it's supposed to be In a way Resist no more. Feed me in the ways of devotion. I don't wanna get caught in the motions. My heart is only for you, Lord. So I let go and I let love show me life like it's supposed to be. In a way, sis, here awaits us. All the freedom I let. What's up, everyone, and welcome to One and All Kids. We're starting the next week of our training camp series, learning about things we can practice to be more committed to living a life for Jesus. All commitment means is making a plan and putting that plan into practice in our lives each day. Our memory verse is from 1 Timothy 4.8, which says, For physical training is of some value, but godliness has value for all things, holding promise for both the present life and the life to come. Keep memorizing that verse so that we can remember to be committed followers of Jesus. Last week, we learned how we can practice praying. This week is about talking to others about God. Let's go. Hey everybody, Woo! welcome to One Little Kids. And we're playing some games today. Let's go. This one is exciting because they get to play along with us. Oh. And honestly, every time we do a game like this, the kids just like... I, I do love to see you guys by beat us because we're your biggest cheerleaders. We root for it's you true. guys. So thanks for rooting for us, but we also root for you. 
We got you. So what's, what's the game? Tyler, he's going to tell us about it. And that is completely right. The kids are probably going to win this game because it's all about emojis. Ooh. So you guys are going to be guessing the emojis, but you're not going to be guessing what the emojis mean. You are going to be trying to, trying to guess what the emojis are because the first image you're going to see, they're completely blurry. What? Oh. So you're going to try to guess what emojis are being shown. Now, I don't know the names, the specific names of all these emojis, so we're just going to go with the best descriptor that you get mm. uh, because some of them are a little obscure. But all that to be said, I think the kids are going to walk away with this one pretty handily. All right, we got to beat them. We you guys, for you. Do you guys want an example? Do you guys want an example so. emoji? Yeah, let's, let's, sure. let's see. Yeah. Okay. What are we dealing with? This is what you're dealing with. It looks like money's throwing up, throwing up money, and somebody's sick. I think they're both like throwing up ones. Ah! Uh, Josh, <laughs> with the blur emoji, we'll, we'll, we'll count that as a point. Okay. Yeah, the descriptor okay. is but what's really getting handed in. Sample, right? That, didn't that is just an example. It does not cool. count. Man. And these are hard. <laughs> we're gonna start off. I will say I feel some. Like they're gonna get harder than it, that. It's not <laughs> like, like it's not. Did you guys beat us? Probably. They probably did. Now all these emojis, I will say. They're not like that side to side. Some of them are emojis on top of other emojis. Some of them, oh. they're not, um, all the emojis are not the same size. Some of them are smaller. Some of them Should are bigger. Them so, Big them up. here we go. Are you guys ready? This is the, this is the real deal right here. Let's do it. All right. Three, two, one. Okay, it's grapes and the frog is on the top. That looks correct. Yes. <laughs> That it's is like correct. Frog. That's my only Julianne. answer is if I can say things faster than Josh can, because Josh is really good at these games. So Hey, you did it though. Out. You got a point. Thank Julianne, you. one point. One Gotta point. step it up now. Here we go. Alright, next one. A squid, squid and a pizza. pizza. <laughs> <laughs> We're gonna both give you the point for that one. Hey. That one was a tie. <laughs> I feel like we were really in sync on that You guys one. were. That one, all right. That Those were some of the easy ones. Now, oh no, we move into the game. medium difficulty. Medium. Okay. A rainbow with the ocean behind it? Or just a- I'm gonna go rainbow with- Wait, oh. I know what it is. It's a rainbow and then there's the little robot head in the bottom corner under the rainbow. What? No way! There it is! <laughs> How did you know that? Well, I just was staring at it, and then I was like, below the rainbow looks like something different, and then I realized, robot head. All right. Wow. Okay, we're tied now, right? We're tied? You are tied. You ready for the next okay. one? Yep. Um, it's the, the guy with the really tall hat, like in the British... Um, People is like it a soldier? And is it a British soldier? I think soldier? it's a pig underneath. Oh. No, no, it's a pink heart. It's a pink heart underneath. Yeah, I'm going to say a British soldier on top of a pig. You're going with pink heart? I'm going with pink heart. <laughs> oh, oh, what is it? Okay, we have to keep guessing. Um, I will tell you, the soldier is correct. The soldier with the tall hat. Okay, I think it's a soldier and like a tongue. Or like a, I don't know. <laughs> You might be right. I'm kind of thinking it's like a kidney or something. <laughs> <laughs> Julianne, what's your guess? Josh, what's your guess? Um, I think I'm going to go with the tongue. Yeah, I'm going to go with the tongue. Oh, uh, a soldier on top of a fruit. Can I be generic with fruit? It's a tongue! It's a Julianne <laughs> with the tongue sticking out. That was hard. That was hard. That was good. All right, you guys ready for your next one? Yes, These she's winning by one now. She's winning by one. Here I we go. Step it up. I gotta step it up. Oh. A big heart, a little heart, and then kissy lips. Yeah, that was also Actually, I'm gonna go two tongues. <laughs> the heart and the kissy lips. Josh, we're gonna say you got that one correct. We're gonna say it you was, got that one correct. Yeah, wow, okay. All right, you guys, are, you guys are all tied up. We're tied again, okay. All right, here we go. This one's tough. Oh, it's a weightlifter on top of a girl going like this. I see it. Wow. I see it. That was good. I was wow. trying to figure out if it was you like guys a bunch get that one? Or, And then I was like, no. All right, like everybody. Oh. If Julian gets this, or if neither of you get it, Julian wins. If Josh so gets odds. it, it's a tie. And we're going to leave it as a tie. Because then everyone wins. All right. Or do we have or to do a tiebreaker? I will tell you. There are two emojis. 
They're both faces. One's a merp face, like, and one's a nerdy glasses face. What? Congratulations, Josh tied it up at the end. You guys tied, you both win. There was no way you she's, that. She's this not saved. This she's is not rigged. satisfied. She she wants that a tiebreaker. So <laughs> there is no tiebreaker. We end in a tie. You both win. Congratulations. We'll Add the point to your record. Week. But you know what? You know who really won? The kids. The kids. Yeah. They probably beat you at every single one of those, except for Squid Pizza. Squid hey, Pizza. Hey, that last one, though, that's, that's a little good. sus. Hey. He shouldn't have known that as quickly as he did. I don't know. I You're use that emoji every once in a while. Justice for Julianne. I, I, I don't know. I feel like I see that emoji a lot. So there's not too many emojis with black. For those of you who are on Julianne's side thinking the game was rigged, we'll have to wait till next week to see if she can come back. In a game of her own. Until then, enjoy service. See ya. Hey, everybody. My name is Pastor Julianne, and we are in week three of our training camp series, learning about how we can be committed to follow Jesus as best as we can. We learned about practicing hearing from God and practicing praying these last two weeks. Now we're going to learn about being committed to practicing sharing who God is with others. Our bottom line this week is practice talking about God. Practice talking about God. This is probably the hardest one in our series. Talking to other people about what you believe is hard, even when you're a thousand percent sure of what you believe. But like many believers, we run into questions about how our faith is going to be applied in our lives. You might feel like people will make fun of you if you talk about God too much. Maybe you feel like people just won't understand you. You might even feel like you won't be able to answer a question that gets thrown your way after you talk about God. No matter what it is, there are plenty of reasons to shy away from sharing about Jesus. But there are many more reasons to jump into the unknown and share with others about who Jesus is and what he's done in your life. As you know, Jesus traveled around with 12 disciples and they went to different towns and cities. Jesus taught and did many miracles in many of these places and he shared about his Father in heaven, God, while showing what it looked like to live a life without sin. While traveling in a place called Caesarea Philippi, Jesus talks to his disciples about who he is. Now, this area was named after Caesar, a Roman ruler who many considered to be God. In fact, there were a ton of gods worshipped in this area and many others like it. So Jesus took his disciples to a place filled with many false gods and asked them who they thought he was. In Matthew 16, we see these conversations. So grab your Bibles. We're looking at Matthew 16. Matthew's in the New Testament, talking about Jesus. Looking for that big number 16. Let's see. 19, 15, 16. So Matthew 16. We're going to look at verses 13 to 16. So look for that little 13 to get us started. It says this. When Jesus came to the region of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, who do the people say the Son of Man is? They replied, some say John the Baptist, others say Elijah, and still others, Jeremiah or one of the prophets. But what about you, he asked, who do you say I am? Simon Peter answered, you are the Messiah, the son of the living God. Peter got it. Jesus wasn't just another prophet of old or just another teacher. Jesus was the son of God, the Messiah, the savior that they had been waiting for. Matthew 16 verses 17 to 19 says this. So look for that little 17. Jesus replied, Blessed are you, Simon, son of Jonah, for this was not revealed to you by flesh and blood, but by my father in heaven. And I tell you that you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of Hades will not overcome it. I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven, 
Whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. In time, Jesus would let everyone know who he is through his miracles, his teaching, preaching, correcting church leaders, overturning tables, loving his enemies, and lighting the way. And now we're in a position to do the same. We can talk to others about Jesus, about God, about the things that we've experienced and the things that we've seen and heard. But how do you do that, especially now when the world is just so divided? It seems like conversations are out the window if someone disagrees with you. Simple. Practice. Everyone is terrible at something the first time, but the more you do it, the easier it will get. I have a friend that's going to share a little bit more about this, so let's go hear from them. Hi guys, my name is Pastor Kelly, and I'm from the Rancho campus, and I have a question for you. How many of you guys like candy? I love candy, especially Reese's Peanut Butter Cups and Almond Joys. Well, if you have something that you really, really like, and you have a friend, and you know that they have never experienced that, maybe they've never had Reese's Peanut Butter Cups or Almond Joys or whatever your favorite is, you might get excited, right? And you wanna share it with them because you love it, you enjoy it, and you care about the person. So you're like, I want you to enjoy this candy like I enjoy this candy. So you're gonna wanna share that with them. Or maybe it's a new toy you've gotten or a new video game that you really, really like. You want them to try it too. Well, that's kind of how I feel about God. See, I have a kind of a crazy story with God. I, unlike you guys, I didn't necessarily grow up learning about God at church. Um, and so I didn't really get to know God really well until I was much older. But he made such a huge difference in my life. Because see, before I knew God, I spent a lot of time trying to find, trying to look for things that made me happy. I tried to make a lot of money. I tried to go to cool places or buy, buy cool things. But eventually I realized that those things didn't make me happy for very long. And then I met Jesus. And fortunately, someone else loved God too. And they wanted to share that with me. So I learned about Jesus, they invited me to start coming to church, and my life changed. Well, maybe you've grown up in the church, maybe you've spent your whole life here. That doesn't mean that you don't have a cool story too. Your story is important no matter what it looks like, and God will use that story to help you share God with other people. So one way you can do that is just by telling them your story or just sharing like how God has made a difference in your life. Or maybe you can invite them to come to church or a cool activity like summer camp or a movie night or whatever you have going on there, right? So they can see what your faith, your relationship with God looks like in real life. But no matter what, your story is important and God wants you to share it because just like candy, or your favorite video game, or whatever it is, we, we want to share the things that we love with people that we love. But that doesn't mean that we force it on them, right? If I say, hey, I really like Reese's Peanut Butter Cups, you should try them, and my friend says, no, no thank you, I don't want to. I'm not going to force them to eat the Reese's Peanut Butter Cup, right? That would be kind of weird. But it's the same with God. You, you don't wanna force it on others, but you can just share, share how much you like it and how it makes a difference in your life. And you never know, they might be curious and just want to know more. Next, I wanna tell you about my husband. This is my husband, his name is Eric. Well, when I started to learn about Jesus and my life started to change, he started to become curious too. But he was really unsure. So I just started talking to him. I told him how God was making a difference in my life and how it was making me happy. And that happiness was lasting more than the cool things I could buy or the money I could make or the places I could go. Because God let me know that I was loved and he never changed. He didn't wear off like the joy I found in those other things. So I started telling my husband about him. And at first it was like that Reese's peanut butter cup. He was like, yeah, no thanks. But eventually he became curious and he wanted to know more. Now the really, the cool thing is after a while, my husband, I invited him to come to church and he, 
he realized that, hey, this is actually pretty cool. And now he knows Jesus and he shares his love for God and for Jesus with other people. And now what's really cool is we now have this thing in common. And before we might talk about things that we like, and we still do, right? Things, maybe it's a movie we like or a restaurant we like to go to, or we talk about our kids and those are all really great. But it's really awesome because now we have our love for God and Jesus in common as well. And so we talk about that. We just went out of town last week and on a little vacation and we spent so much time just hanging out and, and we read our Bibles and we talked about the cool things that we read and what we had learned. And that makes our friendship, our relationship even more special. So I wanna encourage you, don't be nervous to talk to others about your faith. It can make a real difference in their life. And they may not wanna hear about it at first and they may be like, yeah, no thanks, that's okay. That is all right. But you can just keep sharing anyway with respect and just let them know, you know, how God has changed your life and then invite them to church, invite them to that cool thing so they can experience what church looks like, what faith looks like to you. And what you might find is that your friendships become even more deep and even more special because you have this awesome thing in common, and that is Jesus. All right, friends, I hope to see you soon. Bye-bye. Practice talking about God. You can practice by telling people what Jesus means to you. You can practice by talking about God as a part of everyday conversations with your family and friends. When you choose to talk about God, it reminds you to keep your eyes open and see what God is doing and helps other people see who God is and how God is working too. God wants us to grow and continue to learn about who he is. And at the same time, God wants that for everyone else as well. God wants a relationship with everyone. And one way that others will know God is by hearing us, all of us, talk about God. Let's pray. Dear Jesus, thank you so much for just your example of how you lived without sin, how you walked around and talked about God and who you were to all these people. We pray that we would be able to follow in your footsteps and be brave and bold, just like Peter, and say, I know who Jesus is. He is the Son of God. He is the Savior of my life and the Lord of my life, and I'm not ashamed. God, I pray that you would bring to mind, even right now, someone that we should spend some intentional time talking about Jesus with, whether that's a friend or a family member or someone else, we pray that you'd give us opportunities to speak to that person or lots of people about who you are and what you mean to us and how you've just worked in our lives, healing us, strengthening us, and bringing us closer to you. We love you, Jesus. And we thank you so much for who you are and all the things that you've done for us. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. This one is a tough one to practice. What if, what if you get shot down? there's always a chance that someone won't listen to you or agree with you. And that's okay. God wants us to practice sharing with others about who he is by telling them and through our actions. The more we act like Jesus and the more we talk about who he is in our everyday lives, the more people will want to hear about him. I'm thankful that God keeps giving me chances to practice talking about him with other people. I'm thankful for that too. God is so caring and loving and he wants us to be committed to following him better. I love showing God how grateful I am for the things he's done and the patience he has for me. And when we give our offering money, we're telling God that we understand that he's the one who gives us all things in our lives, including our patience and the ability to practice these things. When we give our money, we're being obedient to God, but we're also worshiping him for who he is and what he's done for us. Giving our offering shows others that we love Jesus. Sometimes we want to keep what we have to ourselves, but Jesus tells us to share with others. When we give our offering back to Him, we are showing other people that we love Jesus. When we give our offering back to Him, we are showing other people that we love Jesus more than we love our stuff and our money. By doing this, we get the chance to show others with our actions that Jesus is the very best, and we love Him very, very much. You can talk to your parents and leaders about giving an offering today. Now, it's time to grow together. This can look like singing and dancing. This can look like rooting against the Packers. This can look like hanging out with your community group and your leaders, or look like something else. But I'm glad that we all get to do it together. Let's go. to me.
me Before I knew that I was helpless You had won the victory Before I fell into the darkness You were out to set me free Before I knew that I was broken You poured out your grace on me
washed in water Sing them praises and the Spirit, Son and Father Our God will finish when He's done I love growing closer to Jesus with you, and I can't wait to do it again next week. Don't forget, invite friends every single week as we learn more about what following Jesus is truly like. Until then, we want to send you out into the week with one hope. One life. In, in Christ. Christ. Bye, friends. Go Bengals. <laughs>